Let's proceed with this example. Here we have an input cluster. This cluster contains a numeric, two Boolean values, and a numeric slide. There's a few operations we wish to perform on this cluster. First of all, we want to extract the numeric value and the Boolean value, pull them out of the cluster, and place them into scalar indicators. Secondly, we want to be able to take this cluster and modify the values and insert those new values into a new cluster. Thirdly, we want to take a portion of this cluster, just one of the Booleans and the slide value, and display it in another small cluster. So let's run this VI and observe the behavior. If I change the value of the numeric to 5, notice how the value in the modified cluster is 6. However, the two scalar outputs here show us the current value of the numeric, and if I toggle the second Boolean, we'll see that the second Boolean is being indicated here in the Boolean indicator. Also observe how, if we move the slide, not only does the slide value update in the modified cluster, but it's being displayed in the small cluster. Let's take a look at the code, see how this is being achieved. The first function that we need to do in order to extract the data out of the cluster and place it into the scalar indicators is the unbundle function. The unbundle and bundle functions are available from the cluster palette. We notice here right across the top we have unbundle by name, bundle by name, unbundle, and bundle. If we place down an unbundle operation here and connect our cluster up to it, we'll notice that we automatically get four terminals represented. The first is a double precision, the second and third are booleans, and the fourth is a numeric as well. Notice also that as we hover over each of these, the label is being presented of the actual value which each of those terminals represents. So the first numeric is being indicated here in this numeric indicator, and the Boolean value coming into that indicator there is coming from the second of the two Booleans, which we know is Boolean 2. And that, of course, agrees with the behavior which we observed before. So that's the unbundle function. Secondly, we have a small cluster which we've generated here. This small cluster is comprised of the first Boolean value and the slide value. This small cluster is created by using the bundle function. The bundle function is available from the cluster subpalette. When we place down a bundle function, we can expand and contract this operator to have as many or as few terminals as we wish. So what we've done here is created a two terminal bundle function which takes one Boolean value and one numeric value. The result of that is a cluster which contains our two elements. The next operation we're performing is to take our cluster and generate our modified cluster. In this case we're using the unbundle by name and the bundle by name. Let's start with the unbundle by name. Unbundle by name behaves very much like the regular unbundle function, except that when we place it down we can expand the block to show as many terminals as we wish. Also, each of these terminals, by using the operate tool, when we click on it, we can choose which of the cluster elements are to come out. Observe that up here in the unbundle function, all four of the terminals are represented and they only appear in the exact order that they appear in the cluster. However, in the unbundle by name, we can select however many terminals we wish and have them extracted from the cluster in whatever order we wish. So we've taken data out of our cluster here, generated a numeric, scalar, and a Boolean value. We've taken our numeric and incremented it, and we've taken our Boolean and inverted it. Next, what we want to do is we want to generate our modified cluster. The numeric and the first Boolean value are modified. However, the second Boolean value and the slide numeric are not modified. Let's run the code again just to review this behavior. Notice how the 4 is changed to a 5, and whenever we change that value, the numeric on the modified cluster is incremented by 1. The first Boolean is inverted. However, the second Boolean is not modified, so also is the slide.
The bundle by name function here is achieving this behavior in two ways. First, we see that the modified numeric value is being inserted, and we see that the inverted Boolean value is being inserted. However, we're using the middle terminal here. The middle terminal is an input cluster. This gives us two important pieces of information. The first is it tells us what type of data is available in the cluster and what their names are. And that's why when we click here under any of these expandable terminals in the bundle by name, we see that the same four names in the same order appear as they do in the original cluster. What this allows us to do is to pick which values get inserted here. We have the numeric and we have the Boolean. Notice how we're not changing the values of Boolean 2 or slide. However, the values that are present along the wire here still come through to the output. In other words, the modified cluster only has these listed terminals modified. The rest of them are not changed from the original value.